All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while. Um, I have my reasons for not posting for a little bit. So we're gonna post this video today. We're gonna see how things go. Also been posted on the Porch channel. If you have not subscribed to that, go subscribe to that. Links in the description. Post on the MRE channel. I post on all of my new lottery channel. Trying to separate the lottery videos from this channel. So we'll put a link to all that in the description. If you're not subscribed to all those, go subscribe. If you haven't seen me in a few days or a week on this channel, definitely one of the other channels. So today we're talking about top mistakes mechanics make. This has been kind of a, a subject for a while. Um, I'm gonna approach this with caution. It's probably gonna piss everybody off anyway, but we'll approach it with caution the best we can, right? Okay, number one is not researching the job before jumping in. This is, everybody knows this one, right? Take your car to the shop, they just jump in, don't research before stuff gets broken, a lot of stuff gets taken apart, doesn't even get taken apart, and you end up with a mess or a very expensive mess on your hands. Maybe it'll get fixed in the end, or maybe more stuff will get broken and it won't get fixed, right? Um, a lot of shops have, I forgot what it's called, the book they go by, they look it up on their little shop computer. They go by the book, it gives you like a printout, text stream maybe, maybe is what it's called. Uh, but that's very limited, right? There's a lot of updates, a lot of stuff happened. A lot of those programs are not updated. A lot of them don't show, if you're doing something out of the ordinary, it's not gonna show what you need to do, right? Um, Spend your time, do the research. If you don't look at anything and try to do something, that's when things go really sideways. So don't do that. This is more of a, well, I gotta say is a beginner tech do's and don'ts, but it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not, right? It's pretty much any tech. Um, using an impact gun to tighten bolts. You see me use an impact all the time to put wheel lugs on. Um, we start them by hand and impact them down. My gun has settings on it to where you could select the settings. It's not an air gun. It's not all or nothing. Uh, I know the lowest setting is about 60 foot pounds, right? If you need to have something bigger, you put on number two. If you want to twist it off, you put on number three. That's the three settings for it. Uh, a lot of it too is putting 10 mil bolts on with the with a quarter inch drive impact. You gotta be careful doing all that stuff. And a lot of guys say, oh, I don't use impact at all. Well, impact is for disassembly a lot. If you don't use that, you're gonna start having elbow and shoulder problems. Ask me how I know, cause I know very well. <laughs> and you know, manually wrenching on stuff is great, but as you start getting older, it's not so great, right? Um, I had a elbow problem, it finally went away it took a long time to heal up, but it was some wrench from pulling our wrenches too hard all the time. So that's one thing. Impacts could really break stuff if in the wrong hands. If in the right hands, they could speed the job up tenfold. Uh, I'll touch one more thing on that before we go to the next. Tire shops, horrible, horrible about over torque and wheel studs using those torque sticks, using the biggest snap-on impact money could buy. Every, if I took the Porsche to the local tire shop, they took the wheels off, I guarantee if I bring it back here, they would be almost double the torque what they should be. And that's how you break stuff, that's how you strip stuff off. Eh. I mean, be an asshole, but that's just kind of the way it is. That's the way it's been. My past experience for the last nearly 40 years of taking stuff to any, anywhere, 30 years, we'll say, um, that's been that way every time. And their reason is, oh, we don't want to have, we don't want to get sued by not putting stuff on tight enough. Well, had some pretty crazy stuff in my day. I've seen some pretty crazy stuff over torquing things. Um, the next, I'm gonna skip around a little bit on my list here. I got a whole list written out. Uh, taking jobs over their head. And a lot of shops will do that. They get 
they see the dollar signs in their eyes, they'll take a job they shouldn't be taking. Um, some of these jobs is something that an engine rebuild, something really big, something very tedious. It's more something if you want to take it to your house, if you do this stuff on the side, you take it to your house and do it, where you can spend your own time with it. But a lot of guys will take in, like the, my brain just here and there and everywhere, as you can see. I'm trying to talk, I think of something else, I jump and jump and jump and jump. Like the M5 rod bearings. If I would have taken that around here, Shops probably would have said yes. They would have made a absolute nightmare mess out of that job, right? Things like that. Things that take a great deal of research and know-how to do that. I've done rod bearings of probably 50, 60 inches in my day. I know just what to do. Even then, you still have to look everything up. You have to see what else needs to be replaced at the time you do that. If I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't replace the Vanos line and the engine would have failed. We had check engine light permanently, had all kinds of issues, even doing the job over, right? That's a perfect example of it. Um, some transmission jobs, you have to know exactly, when you change a fluid, you change a filter, you know you have to know exactly what to do. You have to be careful of that, right? Um, taking huge jobs that take all their time and make them lose money or make the shop lose money. There again, engine rebuilds, trying to rebuild a transmission, engine removal and replacement. That's another one. A lot of shops will lose money on those jobs. And, you know, that's a big commitment. Once you start, that's a big commitment. It's not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Give me the money and out the door, oil change or a uh, ball joint or tie rod or brakes. It's not that, right? And a lot of shops won't do an engine swap or they'll have a tech that'll take that stuff home and do it. They have a shop at home and they want to do it on the weekend or I don't know. That's probably a better way to do that. The best way to do it is always do it yourself. I understand a lot of you guys don't have the shop or the know-how or the time or the desire to do that. Then you have to find somebody to do it. And no, I don't want to rebuild your engine. I don't want to take your engine out. So don't write any comments that, <laughs> Nathan, please, 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 please help me. No, I'm sorry. I can't help everybody anymore. There's too many of you. Too many of you. Um, the next one is really bad customer service. Holy crap. Don't even get me started on this. If you're wanting to become a tech, if you want to go work in a shop, whether it's a dealership, whether it's any shop, whether it's an indie shop or a specialist shop or general doing breaks, well, I don't know whether you're changing windshield wipers. You have to know how to talk to customers. And I see this so much, so, so much. And I was taught this early on. I sold office equipment, did office equipment stuff early on. I knew how to do stuff, right? A lot of these guys have no idea how to communicate to customers, no idea how to say stuff correctly. You see a lot of grouchy faces in a mechanic shop. It's hard, difficult, dirty work, right? But if you're in a bad mood all the time, you need to find a different profession. This is not for you. You have techs that love what they do, and you have techs that just are doing that just to make some money. Those guys won't hold up. Never. Same as YouTube. If you don't really, if you're not really into it, you'll never make it. If you're only there just to get rich because you see some kid in a YouTube mansion in, in LA and you want to make millions of dollars and you're only there for that, but you don't care about the videos. You don't care about the whole works. You're never going to make it. You're going to get burnt out in a week or two days and you're going to quit. Same way with mechanics, same deal, same way with anything, any career you pursue is like that. You have to want to be in that profession. Um, let me see here. Overcharging. The I don't want to do it price, right? The I don't want to do it price will usually get you in trouble. And the I don't want to do it price is, well, this thing needs brakes, but I don't really want to do it. So I'm going to tell them a, a crazy price so they don't do it. Then they say yes, right? 
since they're paying a bunch of money to do it, they want a perfect job. And if you do a sloppy job and you charge maximum price, you're gonna have problems. That customer is not gonna be happy no matter what. If you don't wanna do it, tell them you don't wanna do it. Say, I'm too busy, I'm too stupid. No, don't, don't tell them that. I'm too busy, I don't wanna do that. It takes too much time. There's too much other stuff here we have to do. I'm sorry, take it somewhere else. That's your best, best defense. Um, the last one is gonna hit home with some of you guys, arrogance. I'm probably pretty arrogant too, I don't really care. I don't have to run a shop though. And this isn't all shops. Over the years I've seen, especially indie shops are bad about this. BMW indie shops are the worst. We're the best. I'm the best tech there ever was. I could fix anything. I've had indie shops tell me that before. And it's just like, buddy, I probably forgot more than you ever learned. <laughs> like, you can't go in there, work there a couple years and know everything. It's just not that way. You never know everything. When somebody asks me how to fix your car, and I don't know. So I don't know. But let me get on Google, and you can bet your ass I'll know right away how to fix it. Right? Because I know how to research stuff. I know how to do stuff like that to get me the right information. That kind of is tied in with not knowing what you're doing before you take the job and trying to wing it. Trying to wing it in automotive will get you a disaster 99% of the time. So that's pretty much it. I'm not coming down to anybody. I'm just saying this is, this is a problem here in America with a lot of shops. All these things are. There's probably a hundred more. Um, my last device, this wasn't on the list, stay away from the snap-on truck. Stay away from the Matco truck. If you're a tech and you're making, let's say you're making good money. What does a tech make? What's good money for a tech? 500 bucks a week? Let's say you're making 500 bucks a week and you're buying a pair of pliers that costs $100. Okay. You don't have to be a mathematician to figure out. That's not going to add up at all. Very quickly at all. You don't need, there's no mat code tools here. There's no snap-on tools here. There's Makita tools here. Makita's expensive enough. Do you need a Matco or a snap-on impact? No. You need a, I'm looking for it. I don't know where the hell I even put it at. You need a Makita impact that costs like a hundred bucks. And I'll walk out of the camera just for a second. And I'll grab a couple things, a couple props. And you need You need this. Uh, what are they, 120 bucks now? If you can't get it off with that, son, you're not going to get it off. Period. That's what she said. Quarter inch drive. Makita. Do anything you want. I have two of these. They built their whole shop. I built my small shop. It's fixed hundreds of cars. Never a problem. You could buy that. You could buy this impact right now for 60 bucks. It's been dropped off a 20 foot high building in the rock several times and you pick it up and just keep using it, right? Is there a lifetime warranty on it? I think there's a 90 day warranty for $59. If you break it after 90 days, go buy another one, right? That's just, you have to learn that stuff. If you're making five, let's say you're making crazy money for a mechanic. Crazy money would be 800 bucks a week, right? Let's say you made 800 bucks, you probably don't, but let's say you did. You made it, took home $800 a week. Let's say you actually got in your hand 800 bucks a week. So let's say you made over a thousand gross a week. You just buy a small handful of tools and that's gone, right? I buy tools all the time. I shop around for the price. I get decent prices on stuff. And even as much as I make, I don't, you throw away money and you act a fool with it, it'll be gone in a second. That's your way to happiness for being a tech. Don't blow all your money as soon as you get it. You're gonna be generally happier in the long run. That's enough of my preaching for today. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you very soon with another video. Have a good day. See you later.